Okay. So, um, yeah, we move on to the um, to the sixth um, gift that we're looking at, which is discerning of spirits. Okay. Um, so discernment, discernment again, just like wisdom, uh, is you know is something that you can learn. You can actually uh, based on your based on our experience of you know whatever we have seen in life we have experienced in life we can you know sharpen that ability to discern, discern or to judge okay what is right what is wrong it's it's like wisdom in action right but this gift of discernment or discerning of spirits that we see in 1 Corinthians 12 um, is something else like right? it's not discernment of right and wrong but it's actually it, it it's it's as if uh, like for example, um, it's to it's to know or to discern. Okay, what spirit is in operation? Okay, so what spirit is in operation behind a person doing, saying, ministering what they're doing? Okay, which means, you know, are they inspired by the Holy Spirit? Right? Is it from their own human spirit, right? Or is there another spirit in operation, right? Are they inspired by not the Holy Spirit, not their own? They're not speaking from their own heart, but they are speaking maybe inspired by the evil spirit or inspired by a familiar spirit. If that is discerning of spirits, right? What is the source? Who is influencing them? Where is all this coming from? Okay, that is one thing. The second thing is also to look into, to see into the spiritual realm, right? Like we see several times in Scripture where, where God opened the eyes to see what was happening in the spiritual realm. Okay, so it could be that, right? So, uh, for example, some Old Testament examples, if you want to look at, you know, uh, Elisha's servant, um, servant, right? Servant's eyes are being opened. Okay, we see this in Second Kings chapter six, verse fifteen to seventeen. Second Kings chapter six. Okay, it says um, Elisha prays and he says, uh, so this is what is happening. You know, they are on the hillside and um, there, there's an army surrounding the city, horses, chariots, everything. And then uh, Elisha's servant is like, he's like, Master, what shall we do? You know, all these people have come and they are surrounding the city and, you know, what can we do? We are, our lives are in danger, you know. So Elisha says, do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Okay? And then he says, he prays and he says, Lord, I pray open his eyes that he may see. Okay? This is, that is what he prays. Right? Now, See, the servant's eyes were already open. Yes or no? Right? His eyes were open. And what did he see? He saw all those soldiers. He saw the chariots. He saw the horses. And he's saying, you know, what can we do? These people are there. They're, you know, they're, they're surrounding us. So that is why he's, he's fearful. He's afraid. And he's asking, you know, what can we do? So Elisha prays and he says, open his eyes. That those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And then... His eyes were opened. It says that then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. Right? So this is not talking about the physical eyes, because his physical eyes were already open. He was already seeing. He was already seeing that there were all these things happening. But it says the Lord eyes, the Lord opened his eyes and he saw, which means he's talking about something in the spiritual realm. Right? His spiritual eyes were open. And this is what he saw. What did he see? Behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Right? So he was able to see into the spirit realm and he saw what God had placed there. That the mountain was full of chariots of fire and horses and so on. So he saw. So this is what Elisha said. Elisha could already see it. right? And he says, those who are with us are actually more. It's not like we are outnumbered. No, they are outnumbered. And he says, Lord, open the eyes. And, and Elisha's servant opens and saw and saw and he sees and, and he sees that the hillside was full of 
uh, chariots and fire and so on, right? In the, in the New Testament also, we see several times the Lord Jesus knew their hearts, knew their thoughts, right? So it was as if he was looking into their heart to see, you know, he could hear what they were saying, and sometimes they were not saying anything, but he could hear or he could see what was actually in their hearts, what thoughts they had. Okay? For example, if you look at um, Matthew 9, verses 1 to 7, okay, when Jesus heals the paralytic, they were actually thinking all kinds of thoughts. How can this man heal? How can he heal on a Sabbath? And all those things, right? But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your hearts? Right. So he knew that there was something they were thinking in their hearts, and he knew it, what was in their hearts. So he's saying, why do you think evil in your hearts? Okay. Um, similarly, um, he knew the Lord Jesus in his conversation with Peter. You know, He knew something that Peter was speaking by revelation of the Holy Spirit. But he also knew when Peter was speaking, not, not by the Holy Spirit, but by his own flesh and also by inspiration from the evil spirit or inspiration from Satan. For example, you know, uh, Matthew chapter 16. Okay, let's, it's very interesting, right? Matthew chapter 16. Um, okay, Matthew 16. And verses 16 and 17. Okay, verse 16 and 17. Like, this is in response to the Lord's question. Matthew 16, verse 15. He said, who do you say that I am? Okay, the Lord is asking a question. Who do you say that I am? Uh, verse 16. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Verse 17. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed to you, but my Father who is in heaven. The fact that he is Jesus, the Son of God, right? Who revealed this? He said, it's not from human information. It's not from a human source that you receive this revelation. It's from the Father. He says, flesh and blood have not revealed, but my Father in heaven. Okay, let's move on. And he says, you know, I, I'll say to you that on this rock, right, uh, I will build my church and so on. Okay. If you go further down, verse 21, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, he must suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up the third day. He was, so he was talking about what is going to happen. Okay. That time, Peter does something. Verse 22, Peter took him aside. Okay. He says, Jesus, Jesus, come, I want to tell you something. And he began to rebuke him. Right, saying, Jesus, what are you saying? You cannot do like this. You cannot behave like this. You can't say like this. He's saying, far be it from you, Lord. This shall not happen to you. Right? All this persecution and you being killed and you know this shall not happen to you. So he was either he was speaking out of his own, you know, out of his own spirit, out of his flesh, fleshly understanding, right? But the Lord rebukes him. What does he say? He verse twenty three. He turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Okay, he says, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Okay, so what Peter was saying did not come from the Father. It was not a revelation from the Father, right? He's saying, this is a wrong revelation. This is the wrong thing that you're saying. Earlier, the Lord says, flesh and blood does not reveal this to you. That information that Jesus, you're the son of the living God, right? Flesh and um, blood does not reveal to you, but my father. But here, he, the Lord Jesus discerns, right? This is not the spirit of the father who's, who's bringing this information, but this is the spirit of darkness, right? So get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God. Okay, so the discerning of spirits, right? By who are we inspired to share or do uh, something 
it could be you know certain things we could be doing because of our you know because of what the lord is leading and we are listening but sometimes it could be our own flesh our own heart right our own imagination our own desire so the discerning of spirits helps to really make that difference make that distinction so right discerning of spirits okay so we know we understand satan's schemes we are able to uh, distinguish okay uh, you know is this something genuine or is this person actually you know um, you know saying something that is not of god out of their own flesh out of their own heart etc so we recognize the source um, um, you know certain times we might have to you know the, how this thing operates is if we un understand the source is not god or source is not the holy spirit you know the person is being controlled or influenced by another spirit then we might have to bring deliverance right lead the person to be delivered from that influence break that influence of the the evil spirit so because the lord is revealing that this is not him but it's some other spirit so we can break the influence of the uh, evil spirit right so it can be leading the person in deliverance recognizing true and false ministers uh, of god recognizing what are people's true intent okay they might be saying something but in their heart they are not actually meaning what they are saying right just like how the lord found out they were all there the paralytic was healed but they were thinking evil in their hearts right so what they were actually thinking on the inside was not something good so he knew right okay so sanjay's question if the devil knew jesus was going to the cross why didn't he attempt to thwart the plans of god why did he go with the flow okay it is kind of not related to the subject but if the devil knew what uh, that jesus was going to the cross well the devil knew but what the lord was going to accomplish on the cross this great transaction this great exchange the fact that the body of sin was going to be destroyed from what we see we, we see that the devil obviously did not know right so the extent to which um, the, the, the fact that he was going to actually destroy the powers of the enemy all that um, the devil didn't seem to know and he's ignorant after all he's a created being he is not omniscient all knowing right so so that's the reason that he actually went with you know the the evil schemes of destroying and the, you know right from the lord's um, words in john 10:10 10, 10, the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy so stealing killing and destroying is the assignment of the enemy so probably the reasoning of satan and the powers of darkness word of if we steal if we kill if we destroy then that will be the end of the problem right so um so went ahead with killing and destroying um the prince of life but it ended up in the greatest victory ever over sin and death right i hope that helps sanjay right so um so we see that uh, you know uh, we might have to lead the person in um, uh, deliverance we can actually discern recognize uh, what satan's schemes are what certain plans are and it is to preempt and protect preempt pray protect right um of uh, pray protection okay how does this happen okay there is a check or uh, you receive something in your spirit you know maybe there is a lack of peace you see that everything is going fine but you sense there is some kind of a you know lack of peace about something that's happening you know maybe the person seems to be saying the right words but you sense a lack of peace right now again it could be because we are uncomfortable you know it's beyond our comfort zone like we said you know earlier it's it could be because you know the way god is leading you know maybe that's not our comfort zone we could sense a lack of you know unrest or we could sense a bit of unrest because of that also right but if there's a deep sense of unrest 
even when things are fine and you are at you know you are uh, you are it is in very well in your comfort zone and then it's you know we need to check we need to ask god what is it right so we feel, we might feel a check in our spirit or the opposite could happen right so we could have a sense of joy a sense of belonging a sense of fellowship when we are interacting with someone when we are you know maybe in a in a church and uh, environment or just with other believers you know maybe we're meeting people and then there is this very strong connection of joy and peace and fellowship right so you know that well the holy spirit is doing something he's he's bringing that connection and he is there among our midst and he's you know he's doing something in our hearts collectively right okay so okay so we see this right so uh, it could be a visual it could be words it could be something that we are um, uh, it could be something that the lord opens our eyes to right we, we could see something visually as well we see something happening and god could open our eyes to the spiritual realm god could do that he did that for elisha i mean elisha's servant or he did that for elisha he could do that for us also to see okay you know the angels angelic ministry is happening and people have testified to that right or he could see that okay it's a wrong spirit in operation and so on so discerning of spirits it could be so it could be through dreams it could be through physical sensations etc right okay so wh what do we do from there okay that's the important thing right so we we've received this information we know that something is not right okay, so what do i do okay we may have to you know if it's a one on one ministry we may have to use our authority and minister deliverance right? you know that a person is let's say influenced or controlled by the wrong kind of spirit then we can use our authority and cast out cast out that spirit break that influence right we use our words we use um, uh, you know the authority that we have um, about the wrong, wrong kind of spirits right and uh, maybe the best thing is to pray declare the word of god use our kingdom authority to change the very atmosphere in that place okay um okay so at at sometimes we may need to avoid that uh, situation avoid interaction with that maybe with that environment with those kind of people and we may have to walk away from being in the company of you know certain kind of people maybe right um and sometimes you know you might have to do this you know like maybe there's a prophetic word which is given but then you sense something is wrong right so you, while we know the what is exhortation hold on to what is good right when it comes to prophetic words hold on to what is good so don't hold on right you discern something is not right don't hold on you know reject it don't even receive it right maybe it's a you know like a prophetic word saying okay uh, you have only 10 more days to live can god speak that what do you think god can but with that what will god bring a sense of peace okay now the thing is you have already received a word that god wants you to do this this and this okay you're a person who is in you know who who still has to live the life who still have a season of life to live different seasons of life and somebody comes and says okay god god has already spoken god wants you to take to play talk, take you to play places god wants you to minister in this place etc you all have that word and suddenly you see that word okay god you know, god by this time next week you will not be here what do you do what do you sense right immediately there's fear condemnation right hey god has been speaking like this wonderfully and suddenly you know i receive this I will not be around right that has happened it's a real life story like where person was given that word god you know you you will not be around and then person was so filled with fear 
person came and you know checked and asked and you know can god really say that a prophetic word and i'm, I'm so filled with fear so then pastor prayed and said you know just drop it right what has god been speaking to you what is the promise of god right what is the promise of god for someone who follows the lord what is the fear of the lord fear of the lord leads to life right this is what what did jesus come to give you life and life in its fullness what does the enemy come to take away from you you know to take away that life steal kill and destroy right this is what scripture says so you drop that so he just rejected that that word that was filling him with fear and he's still alive okay so that's the thing right so but if we discern that something is not right it's not in line with scripture you know we we feel that it's not with the right spirit this word is given then we reject it okay um, so we refuse to agree with the word right okay okay any questions here discerning of spirits No? Okay. Okay, let's move on to the last three, which is gifts of healing, working of miracles, and gift of faith. Okay, gifts of healing. Okay, so gifts of healing is a supernatural work of healing. Now, if you look at our bodies, right, our bodies, the way God has designed our bodies, our bodies can heal by themselves. Yes or no? Yeah. You receive a cut, and, uh, you know, you just leave it maybe it's a superficial cut you leave it it just heals by itself it's meant to heal by itself god's you know created us in a very wonderful way right we we can heal by ourselves now when we talk about gift of healing we are talking about the supernatural work of god in healing in bringing about healing okay now god can heal in several ways like one as we said a natural way right um, we our bodies are you know uh, designed to be healed god can use other ways like medical uh, you know methods in order to heal yes bring about healing we can heal we can you know receive healing through our personal faith in the word of god right so god says this is what happened on the cross god says that isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5 that you know he took our griefs he took our sorrows and by his stripes we are healed so this is what happened on the cross. It's a redemptive work on the cross. So we believe in what Jesus did on the cross and we receive healing for our bodies. Okay, so bodies and minds. So it can be through personal faith. It can also be through healing, anointing and gifts of healing. So that's what we're talking about. So where, you know, for a person, if a person needs to receive healing, maybe that person doesn't even have faith or is not even believing for healing, right? But the person who's ministering healing is believing God and God is moving through the gifts of healing, okay? So gifts of healings, so through which the person is healed, okay? Then healing can also happen through God's presence and glory. Okay, I think you... You see that, uh, yeah, that table there. What page is it? Uh, 169. Okay. Okay. Slightly different in the notes that I'm projecting. So, sorry. 182 in my notes. Yeah, yeah. But in your uh, printed notes, 169 is it? Okay. Fine. Fine. Okay. Yeah. So, so it could be through the presence of God. It could be through His glory, which means that the, you know, the presence of God fills the place. We read about it in the Old Testament when you know people were worshipping. The presence of God filled the place. The glory of the Lord filled the temple that Sol Solomon was inaugurating. And the priests could not even begin to or continue in worship. Right? The presence of God was so strong, they could not even continue in what they were doing. So they had to stop. Right? So the presence of God, the glory of God, brings about change. Right? Change for the better. The Bible talks about 2 Corinthians 3, where we are changed from glory to glory, right? And it also involves changes in our body, in our mind. We are changed, right? There's healing, okay? Um, so it could happen in that way, um, right? So we see several examples of healing, both in the Old Testament, I won't go into that, and in the New Testament. So um, 
how does the Lord initiate this? Maybe it could be through, you know, several gifts working together, the word of knowledge, right? But God shows that this, this person or these people have this condition in their body, right? God reveals that. How does he reveal that? Maybe there's something that you see, okay? Um, maybe you just see, like, for example, once we were just praying, on Sunday morning, we were just praying and just close, about to close the service. No, or it was the middle of the service, I think, worship time. And suddenly, you know, I just saw that, um, like an x-ray, like the person standing there and then something uh, to do with their lungs. And it was on the this side. So it's to my right, to their left. So it means the left lungs. You know, something was wrong there. And, and I just felt that something was wrong there. So, uh, so just ask the person, you know, is, is there something wrong with the lungs? And then the person said, yes, they're going in for treatment the following week. And then so we prayed. We prayed and said, you know, that, that God heal and completely change and touch and transform. So the reason that he's showing is because he wants his healing power to touch that person. Right? He wants to change that condition or change that situation for that person. Okay? So it could happen that way. It could happen like a word of knowledge. It could be something, um, something visual, something that God puts in our heart so that he can we can move along that line and pray and minister so that God's power can touch and change, right? So anytime you sense that, okay, is there something wrong with that person's body? Is there something, some limitation that God is showing? That means his heart is to bring change. His heart is to change. His heart is to heal that person, okay? It's not just for information's sake, right? It's not just for learning's sake. Um, it's not just that, that we can go and say, hey, there's something wrong with your body. Right? But follow up with prayer, follow up with the release of God's power to touch and heal. Okay? So it could be through words of knowledge. It could be you know, a recognition of God's healing and anointing uh, and so on. Okay? So how do we release that? We declare what God is doing. What we see God do, we declare it. So declaration is different from petition, different from petition, right? Declaration is different from asking. Okay, what's a, how different is it? You know, can someone tell me like, what is the difference between declaration and petition? Or asking and declaring? Did, did huh? Declaration, declaration is what? Sorry. Mm, ordering. Authority. Okay, the authority stating something. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. So petition or when we uh, we are requesting, we are asking in prayer, saying, "Lord, you know, you please do this." You please do this. Now, the Lord Jesus, um, he did both, right? At times, he would just declare. Right? He would just declare over the person. He declare the word, release the word, get up, stretch out your hand, you know, rise up, take up your bed and walk. You do that, right? And at times, he would also, Lord, I pray for your sake, you know, I, I pray that they will be one. He would pray. To pray to the Father, right? Glorify me, even as, uh, or you know, uh, the way you sent them, uh, you know, you sent me, I sent them also. And he would pray to the Father, but he would also declare, right? So here, you know, when it comes to gifts of healing, we we declare what God is doing, or we what we sense God is already doing in our midst. We declare it, okay? So we declare, we issue a command, and we. So, which means that we could pray. We could, we could, you know, we can always do that. We can always pray and say, "Lord, please touch and heal this person," or we could declare, "Be healed in the name of Jesus," right? Because you know that the Lord has already revealed this to you, right? Showing this, there's something wrong, something, something that needs to be healed. So we can declare and say, "Be healed, be restored," in Jesus' name. Symptoms leave in the name of Jesus. 
So we can declare. And with word of knowledge, when when God is, um, or when, when it comes to gifts of healings, when God has revealed that he's doing something or he wants to do something, you release that, you declare that word. Okay, Releasing words of knowledge through faith and prayer, um, getting people to act in their faith, in all these ways, uh, we release or we, we move in the gifts of healings. Okay. Also, I just want to mention, like, for there's another semester that we're going to learn about healing and deliverance. Okay, so I'm just going through uh, in a in a you know in a rapid way, but there's going to be um, one whole semester about healing and deliverance. Also, okay, working of miracles. What is the difference between miracles and healing? We should know the difference, right? What is the difference between a miracle? Somebody? No, healing is also something supernatural, right? God can heal supernaturally. So what is the difference between that and a miracle? Correct. Okay, so so which means that a miracle need not necessarily be something related to the human body, but it can be finances, it can be food, multiplication of food and you know bread and fish that happened, changing water into wine, fish, you know the coin in the mouth of the fish that was a miracle. Like right? so, when it comes to you know let's say specific to healing and you know miracles, if you want to make a difference, let's say a person. Uh, is healed of maybe a heart condition. Okay, uh, is healed of a heart condition. There was, um, there was, you know, certain things that were not, uh, you know, not, not. I mean, the, the maybe the valves or veins were not uh, functioning properly. But now he's healed. The heart is strengthened, just like that, supernatural. What would be a miracle if the person did not have certain parts in the body? Right? Maybe the certain parts in the heart itself. The person had a, you know, uh, something like that. Uh, like, for example, a person did not have an eyeball. In the one eye, one eye is missing. And they're able to see. That's a, that's a miracle. Right? Because they don't have that part which can enable them to see. But now they're able to see even though they don't have that. That would be a miracle. Or something creative, you know. Some things are missing, body parts are missing, but they experience, they see that it has come, the body part is created. That's a creative miracle, right? I remember, I don't know if you've seen that testimony, you know, there's one one person, uh, one of our students, right? I think this happened some before COVID, I think, maybe 2019, 18. Like he, his one leg was shorter than the other, right? And during supernatural hour, people gathered around, prayed, and that leg grew out. Okay, so that leg grew out, and then he put both the legs, and he was he was fine. I think it was about an inch or something, which was shorter. So but that's a miracle. It's not healing. It's something you know. It's not that you know there was pain in the leg, and then. No, the leg pain went. That's that would be a healing, but his leg was one inch shorter, and then that grew out. The testimony is there, uh, in oh, the video is still there. I think APC website or Bible College website. The testimony is there where he shares about that. Right, all the students got together. Pastor was there, and then they healed, and then I mean, sorry, prayed, and then that leg grew out. Right, so that's the miracle working of miracles. Right, okay, so. Um, so I'm just moving ahead. How do we receive? How do we move in it? The same way. We receive information in our spirit and knowing that maybe through word of knowledge, uh, maybe through what the Spirit of God is saying, we receive information that God wants to do something or God is doing something. Right. So in all this, we realize that we really need to develop 
our communication with God. See, God is speaking, right? But we need to remove all those things that are blocking our hearing, all those things that are blocking, you know, our receiving from God. Okay, so that we can actually move as His instruments, move as His vessels for His glory, right? Because God is God wants to do this. And he wants to do it through people. And that's why he's saying, okay, these are the gifts. I want to pour it on the church. Right? And that's why Paul is writing, pursue love, desire spiritual gifts. Like, seek after the best gifts. Why? Because that's God's heart. That's God's desire. He wants to build people, bless people. He wants to reveal his heart. Right? Through all this. Right? Okay. So, declare what we see God is doing. Encourage people to act on it. Okay? Um, release words of knowledge and uh, through prayer and faith, getting people to act in faith, etc. Okay. Okay. Last one. Gift of faith. Now, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith is built up in our heart. When we hear, hear the word of God, when we receive the word of God, there's something supernatural, something spiritual happens, which only the word of God brings. Faith is built up. Right? And uh, we need faith to walk with God. We need to faith to please God. But this gift of faith is a supernatural, again, supernatural impartation of faith. Okay? Normally, we, we may not have this kind of faith, but the Holy Spirit releases that faith into our hearts. Okay, The faith to move what seems to be like mountains. The faith to cross what seems to be like a ocean, okay? problems, situation. The supernatural God kind of faith, impartation of faith uh, to trust God for a miracle. Okay, so we see several Old Testament examples of, uh, you know, um, Moses and the miracles in Egypt and through the wilderness where he just believed God. He spoke to the rock, water had, came out. He, he raised up and touched the, you know, the rod. And the waters parted, and and so on. So, uh, faith in God, faith for the impossible, right? Believing God. So it's a supernatural impartation of faith. Okay. Um, okay. So I think we'll we'll stop here. So these are some of the gifts of the Spirit. Okay. How do we develop this? How do we develop these gifts? Like Paul's instruction to Timothy is, do not neglect these gifts. Okay, do not neglect these gifts, but stir up the gifts, gift of God that is in you. That's what Timothy writes, right? Let's look at that scripture, Second Timothy. Okay, and um, let's turn there. Okay, it says Second uh, Timothy chapter one verse six. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So he's saying stir up, meaning don't neglect. The opposite of stirring up is, you know, stir up, the word actually means to light a fire, to fan into flame. Okay, so he's saying... You have to walk in it. You have to use it. Uh, do not neglect it. Right. Um, so, even in uh, earlier, also he says the same thing. Right. So, don't neglect it. Um, you know, this prophecies that were made, wage the good warfare, and so on. So, um, so that's one thing. So, we don't neglect the gift. We stir up. We walk in it. We look for opportunities to use the gifts. Right. Maybe somebody asks you to pray, or maybe somebody shares some problem, right? Maybe somebody says, uh, you know, can you pray for whatever, you know? Uh, they just invite you. They say, you know, pray. Uh, those are opportunities for us to actually, you know, walk in the gifts. Hear from God. Say, Lord, what are you saying? It, it could be, you know, simple things, like simple, small, um, you know, everyday circumstances, situations, but you can actually uh, use, right? Okay, here are some things. What is our motivation? Always be motivated by love. 
Okay, which means it is for love of God, it is for love of people. It is not for personal gain, it is not for personal fame or popularity. Right? We need to understand that. Okay. Secondly, desire the gifts. Okay. Stir up the gifts of God. Be sensitive to what God is saying. Um, it's important that our, we are rested, we are at peace, we are not agitated all the time, right? When it comes to ministering in the gifts, right? We stay calm, we stay assured, we stay in the place of peace, right? Um, and then we release the gifts. It, you know, when it comes to the gifts, it means that we need to step out and take a risk. Take a risk. You know, maybe when you prayed, when you shared, um, you took a risk. Right? You said, okay, I don't know what this person is going to say, but let me say it. Right? What if I asked right, maybe some, one of you to come and stand here and give a word for each person? Right? You're taking a risk. Right? And uh, anybody wants to do that? Right. Okay, so you're taking a risk, but faith is a step of risk you know, that we're taking. So we need to take a step of faith. We need to take a risk in order to release. So do that boldly, um, because we can do it boldly when we sense that God has spoken, right? when we know that God has spoken. Right? It is when we are still unsure that we don't step out. When we are sure that God has spoken, we will step out. Okay. But in those unsure moments also, step out boldly and you can actually ask the person, okay, is it, is it something like this that's happening? Can I pray? You can ask the person, get the person's permission, and we can step out boldly and minister, right? Okay. Take risks. Um, yes, we might make mistakes. Okay. We might not get things accurately. We might misinterpret, right? Like, I remember, I don't know if I shared that example of the prophet, like he prophesied uh, for a baby. Like, did I share here? No? Uh, okay, so there was this couple who prayed, who uh, came to this prophet and said, you oh, know, please pray for us. And this prophet prayed, and uh, he knew them personally, of course. And then he prayed and said, you know, this time next year, God is giving you a boy baby, right? And... Uh, well, the couple went back after a year, a baby was born, but the baby was a girl baby, right? So he was a very seasoned prophet. He was moving in the prophetic gift. He's called to be a prophet, but he made a mistake, right? He made a mistake. So he, he wrote to them, wrote back to them, apologized and said, you know, in my, in my happiness, in my excitement that God was giving you a baby, you know, I just blurted out, I just said, hey, God is giving you a boy baby. But whereas God just revealed that there was a baby that's going to be born, you know, next year. Okay, so he apologized. So what did he do? Okay, he corrected himself. So next time he will not make that mistake unless he is very sure. So same goes for us, right? We, we could misinterpret, we could share things out of our desire to see some good in that person's life. We could you know, we could do that. No problem. Learn, practice, move on. Right? Okay. Learn from every experience. Um, when we pray with fasting, uh, then again, you know, the things in the flesh, our mind is being renewed. We are putting to death the things of the flesh. So uh, we are growing in our faith, increasing in our understanding. Right? Okay. okay. There's another chapter on proper foundation for release of gifts. This is something that we, you know, a repetition or overlap of what we saw earlier when it comes to the release of gifts, that the gifts are for everybody and, um, you know, how it is based on our relationship with God, our walk with God and so on. So just we could go through that. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll stop here for, for now. We'll stop here.
Okay, so what um, yeah, what I really wanted to say was uh, there's the one aspect of the anointing and symbols of the Holy Spirit. So um, what I will do is I will post a video. Okay, so um, today is um, 16th. Okay, so so um, what I really like to do is uh, maybe post a video over the weekend so you can take a look at it. You can you know go through here. Is that okay? Everybody? Can do that. Everybody here, right? You can do that. Okay. So you can you can just watch it. Online students also, you know, you could do that. And uh, of course, e-learning will do that. So there, there'll be one last um, session, um, maybe a little bit about foundations, about the anointing of the Holy Spirit and symbols of the Holy Spirit. So something for us to. Uh, and uh, also there'll be a we'll post uh, um, the quiz, the last quiz, okay, which you can. Maybe you take a week to finish and and um, and submit. Uh, E-learning students, of course, have time till the twenty fourth. So uh, we'll do that. Okay. So we'll stop here. Okay. Thank you. God bless.